Because we're, we're debt free. free. I'm debt free. We're debt free. We're debt free. Well, I want to welcome you to week one of a new series we're starting this weekend called Scream. I want to shout out to all of our campuses that are joining us via video. If you're watching at church online or on TV, we're glad that all of you are joining us uh, for the start of this new series as well. Well, as you can tell, I have a special guest up here with me today. This is John. He's one of our executive pastors. He's also a CPA, which is pretty cool that we have a CPA on staff at our church and he is financially very wise. And so I'm gonna have him help me with this series, these next three uh, talks, and I know you're gonna learn a lot from him over the next couple of weekends. Now, question. Have you ever seen a debt-free scream? If you haven't, it's one of the most inspiring things you'll ever see in your life. There's this guy by the name of Dave Ramsey. Maybe you've heard of him, maybe he's a cuss word in your household, okay? You know who this guy is, okay? For those of you laughing, he is. Okay, and so he's a financial guru, right? He's got a radio talk show. Millions of people listen to him. And basically, people call in. They've got all kinds of financial issues, and he leads them through biblical principles to solve these issues in their lives. It's really fascinating to listen to. Well, on Fridays, he lets people call in who have worked his plan and gotten completely out of debt. He asks them how they did it, they share their story, and then he has them do a debt-free scream. And so they count it down, three, two, one, and then a single, if it's a single, or a married couple, or a married couple with kids, they all scream, we're debt-free, and freak out, and everybody freaks out, and millions of people listening start crying. I mean, it's incredible, okay? Because you're like, it's inspiring, because it makes you think, if they could get out of debt, and I want to get out of debt, maybe I can get out of debt too, because they did it. So, I wanna do something kinda of strange in this series. Strange for a church service, for sure, but I think you're gonna enjoy it. I've picked three of my favorite debt-free screams. And over the next three weekends, I wanna show them to you from the Dave Ramsey Show. And then me and John are gonna talk about some practical takeaways from these debt-free screams and the biblical principles behind them. So if you're in here and you feel the burden of debt and you're like, I wanna get out of debt, I think you're gonna be inspired in this series to think that you can do it too. Now, this first couple, young couple from Amarillo, Texas, close to home uh, for us, and uh, they went to Nashville to get on the radio with Dave and do their debt-free scream. I think their story's gonna inspire you, so take a look. Live from Financial Peace Plaza, it's the Dave Ramsey Show. In the lobby of Financial Peace Plaza, Chad and Ashley are with us. What's up, guys? What's up, Dave? Welcome, welcome. Where do you guys live? Amarillo, Texas. And what brings you to Nashville, Tennessee? We're here to do our debt-free screen. That's a bit of a trek. Yes, sir. Yeah, you really can't get from Amarillo to Nashville, can you? Well, Not quickly. <laughs> you got to go to Denver first. <laughs> yeah, you got to go to L.A. and back. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Well, welcome. It's good to have you. I assume Thank you're here you. to do a debt-free screen. Absolutely. Yes. I love it. How much debt have you paid off? We paid off 142000 Goodness gracious. Yes, sir. How long did that take you? 29 months. That's rowdy. Making what kind of money during this time? We started off at 73000 and last year we were around ninety. Excellent. $142,000. What'd you buy? Well, we bought everything. <laughs> on, on credit cards and student loans and everything. Car payments. We sold two cars um, right mm -hmm. whenever we started your program. Man, what, what kind of cars did you sell and for how much? We sold, uh, she had a brand new Mustang GT that Ooh. we had to let Oh, no, it was so pretty. Ooh. And we had a GMC Acadia. That was oh, fun. man, you guys, you got good cars. Oh, they were expensive. Oh, we were so, fancy. Yeah, we were really fancy. You, you sold, what, $60,000 worth of cars? Have, yes, yeah. right yeah. on. My gosh, mm -hmm. that's incredible. Out of the 142, what was the rest of it? Um, we had $20,000 in student loans, mm -hmm. um, 10000 in medical bills, and the rest was credit cards. So you guys were just like normal. Absolutely. I mean, and you got st you're not that young, so you guys started early being dumb. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> we're not that young? <laughs> 
<laughs> Today's her birthday, by the way. So I was I had to do that. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. I, I heard the rumor. I set you up. You're not that old. How old are you? I'm um, 28. She just turned. 29 for the Ooh. second year. It's funny second how that year. works. Look at you robbing the cradle. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. That's fun. Yeah, I married an older woman, too, by about four months. It's awesome. a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> I get to make fun of her four months a year. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. It's great. So, very cool. What got you started on this 29 months ago? Well, I was driving a truck at the time, um, just being ordinary, and I heard your show on the radio, and I thought, yes, ordinary sucks. I want to go do something different. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, w I went home and I told her about it. And uh, at the time, we weren't getting along very good at all. Uh oh. Mm -hmm. I didn't think there was a chance she would listen to me, and she did. And, there was um, there was some silent protest. Uh huh. So, but so because you didn't believe, did you? Well, you'd heard schemes and scams before. Not necessarily schemes and scams, but I mean, I didn't really trust much that he said. So uh -huh. why would I let him tell me what to do with my money? I got you. So. Okay. Yeah. We but did, we did. We were the total opposite of what you said. Everything was separate, and we didn't yep. communicate about a thing. So, Was a lot of that about the money stress? A lot of it was, sure. yeah. So has sure. getting rid of the dad helped all of that? Oh, you saved our marriage. Totally, Absolutely. 100%. We, were, we wouldn't be here right now if it wasn't for you. Oh, man. Definitely. Well, I'm honored. I, I didn't do it. You did it. I just showed you how. Yeah, absolutely. But I'm proud of you. I'm really proud yeah. of you. That's cool. You're, you're mm -hmm. way too cute a couple to be separated. I know, right? <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. And the humility, too. It's just, yeah. I know. It's a strong suit. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. Well, you're making really good money. You don't have a payment in the world. No. And you've been married, what, six years now? Six yes. years. I, Last I was guessing. It was a pretty good guess. It yeah. was a good guess. Okay. And three years of that, or two and a half years of that, you've been fighting this debt monster together. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And so when you started out, when you very first started, once you got past the silent treatment and you started actually believing it was going to happen, Ashley, what was the toughest thing about those first few months? Was it selling those cars? It was like being newlyweds all over again. We mm. had to figure out how to be married because we oh, hadn't done yeah. it before. Yeah. Wow. Um, those, those first few months, years that, that we were together, we weren't really a married couple. More like roommates. Yeah. 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 Um, and so when, when he brought that into our marriage and he stepped into the role of a spiritual leader, um, I, had to, I had to listen. And mm -hmm. um, I had to learn how to be a submissive Proverbs 31 wife, which mm -hmm. is something I still work on. Mm -hmm. um, but it settled us into our roles in our marriage. And we had to figure it out. It so, was like meeting two totally new people. Yeah, you guys got you guys got a complete work over, didn't you? Oh, we did. I mean, this is pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So, um, you, that's an interesting thing because, um, taking you said roles, and and he stepped into that. Did you have a spiritual experience during this time too, or you were already in church? I I grew up in church. Mm -hmm. I wasn't doing my job as a man though. Mm -hmm. I was, I was not a good husband. I wasn't a leader. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what it was like to lead. Mm -hmm. and, and by leader you don't mean boss I don't right. want our audience no. to hear no. you're bossing yeah. her around Absolutely that's not what's not. happening because I got a feeling she don't do boss she doesn't yeah. do boss <laughs> no yeah. no it's that servant leadership that you yes. talked about yeah. I, I studied you um, teaching about that a lot and it really spoke to me okay and that was that's what won her mm -hmm. over in the end was um putting her first and serving her and she felt loved yes absolutely mm -hmm. is that right Ashley or did I put words oh, in no no definitely okay. um loved and and worthy mm -hmm. and appreciated and and mm. when you when you're yoked equally mm -hmm. the burden becomes much lighter yeah it sure does sure does so how hard was it to sell the cars oh it was hard it was hard mostly oh. just because we were so upside down we couldn't find anybody to buy them <laughs> <laughs> Once you, once you emotionally let go of them, you couldn't get rid of yeah, the stupid exactly. thing. Yeah, exactly. Nobody wanted them. So uh, we ended up rolling a lot of it into the car that we, we spent a long time paying that off for her. So. Uh, okay. So what are you driving now? I am driving an 07 Corolla. Mm -hmm. Cool. And she's still driving the car we sold the other two for an 04 Expedition. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not bad. Not no, bad. Not at it's, all. It's not it's bad. Not That's bad. doable. Yeah. I like it. I'm attached now because <laughs> it's, it's nice. It's got the heated seats and everything, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but it's old enough that when I back into something, he has no idea. <laughs> like, it doesn't even matter. <laughs> Unless the other guy reports you, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it's usually inanimate objects, like dumpsters and trees, but um, it's old enough that it's like, oh, we don't even need to let him look at it. Uh, it doesn't well, even don't matter. Worry, don't worry about the tree, yeah. <laughs> He's paying no attention to the tree, the leaning tree in the yard. Oh, that's hilarious. 
So what do you tell people that the secret is to paying off $142,000 in 29 months? I tell them it's diligence and communication. Mm -hmm. That diligence that you've talked about over and over, excellence over time. And taking it one day at a time and just doing your best that day mm -hmm. and talking to your wife. I married up. You know, this mm -hmm. is the secret to my success right here. So. Amen. Um, Amen. It's easy for me, but for you other guys out there, I don't know what you all are going to do. <laughs> <laughs> Zig Ziglar was a buddy of mine before he passed away. He told me, he said, Dave, I don't respect a man that can't marry up, and I deeply respect you. <laughs> <laughs> So it's a good thing. That's a good thing, guys. Well, you guys are absolutely incredible. Congratulations. Thank I'm very, you. very proud of you. Thank I, you very I much. mean, you really had a total life makeover. Yes, sir. Definitely. And, uh, and the money makeover is just part of it. Hey, before we leave, because you, you you're so, uh, you have the ability to put a turn of phrase on things so well, talk to that couple. Actually, talk to that lady who's scared, and she's you three years ago, and um uh, somehow tell her that it can really happen if she makes the decision to work together with her spouse. It's listening to that voice that you try to ignore. Um, for such a long time, I, I would hear people in church and friends that we had, and they're like, man, God talks to me all the time. I'm like, man, God doesn't ever talk to me. <laughs> and it turns out he has been. I just, I wasn't listening. Mm -hmm. Um... And usually the thing that you're fighting um, mm -hmm. the hardest and not wanting to do it all is exactly where you're supposed to be. Mm -hmm. um, and once I let go of that and once I let go of um, the restrictions I put on myself and what I thought I was supposed to be as a woman and, and as a wife and, and all these roles I was supposed to maintain, once I let that go and just decided to let God direct my life, mm -hmm. this is what happened. Mm. Um, and just try it. Three years ago, man, we didn't have anything better to do. Sure I mean, <laughs> nothing else was working, so why not? It was either try this or kill him. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I'm still here. So, yeah, just just do it. Why not? Exactly. Yeah. If it doesn't work, go you big can, or go it, home. If it doesn't work, you can always go back to doing it the way you exactly. were. Exactly. There you go. Exactly. I like it. Good work. You guys are incredible. All right, Thank count you. it down. $142,000 in 29 months paid off. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, two, one. We're debt-free! <laughs> oh, they're awesome. They are absolutely awesome. That's inspirational. You can clap for that if you want. That's pretty cool. Some of you are like, can that really happen? Is this for real? Gives you hope, right? That even if you're young and just getting started and you got loads of debt, that you can get out. That's what you want. You determine that's going to be a goal. You can get out like Chad and Ashley. Let's do some takeaways. If you're taking notes, I would write these down. Some takeaways and biblical principles from their story. You ready? Number one. Debt can wreck marriages. You saw it in their story for their first couple of years. There's no question we see this as pastors. John talks to a lot of people struggling with finances in their marriage. Debt can wreck marriages. According to many studies, what's the number one cause of divorce in this country? Money issues, right? What's great in a marriage at creating money issues and money problems? It's a four letter word, but don't cuss in church. I'll let you guess. D-E-B-T, debt. Remember, Dave said, did getting out of debt help in your marriage? What'd they say? It saved it. They said, Dave, you saved our marriage. Getting out of debt, they said, saved their marriage. That's how helpful it was. It was creating unnecessary stress and problems in their relationship. Now, let's just get on the same page and talk about what debt is first. I don't want to insult your intelligence, but not everybody has the same definition, so I want you to know what we mean when we talk about debt. So if you're taking notes, here's a working definition. Debt is this, you want something now, but you can't afford it now. So you borrow money and usually have to pay a fee so you can have it right now. That's debt. Got that down? One more time. You want something now, but you can't afford it right now. So you borrow money, usually pay a fee. What's the fee called? Interest, right, pay interest. So that you can have it right now because you want that thing really bad 
right now. So some popular debts that they mentioned they had as follows. Credit cards. If you don't pay off your balance at the end of each month, you're in debt. If you carry over a balance, that's debt. You say, well, Chris, I make my payment. It doesn't matter. <laughs> you're still in debt. You have credit card debt. Student loans. That's debt, right? Loan equals debt. Car payments. Well, Chris, I make my payment on time. I pay my car each, for my payment each month. It, it's, that's great, but that's debt. You're in debt because you didn't have the money to pay 26000 for your car, so you have to pay it monthly because you borrowed the money from somebody else. That's debt. Your mortgage. It's obviously debt, right? So it starts with saying, I'm in debt. I admit it. Not, I make my payments. No, no, no. You just admit it. I'm in debt. If you have these things and there's other debts, you're in debt. So question, why is debt so good at creating problems in marriages? I'm not saying it happens every time, but why can it? Why does it have the potential to create problems for people that we talk to in their marriages? Well, let's look in your Bible. If you've got a Bible, Proverbs, you can go there with me. These are some words of wisdom from a king named Solomon. And God asked him, Solomon, hey, what do you want? Ask for anything. What did Solomon ask for? Wisdom. God said, because you've asked for wisdom and not wealth or fame or anything else, I'm going to make you the wisest man to ever live. He talks about debt. Did you know that? Can I show you what he says in your Bible? This is Solomon. Proverbs chapter 22, beginning in verse 26. He says, don't agree to guarantee another person's debt or to put up security for someone else. Here's why. If you can't pay it, why is he talking about you if you just co-sign for something? Because if they default, you're in debt. You got to pay it. He's saying, so if you're in debt and you can't pay it, make the payment, even your bed will be snatched from under you wisest man to ever live. Man, Saul, that's kind of scary. He's saying, if, you don't, if you're in debt, this is for all of us, right? And you don't make your payment, people come after you because you have their money and you're not paying them back. And if your bed gets snatched up from under you in your marriage, do you think that could create some problems <laughs> in your marriage? It definitely could. You say, but here's, Chris, here's the thing for me. My family, we make our payments on time. We always make our payments. That's what most people say. And then something strange happens to us all. You know what it's called? Life. I'm making my payments. Then life happens. Somebody loses a job. Uh-oh. Somebody gets a pay cut. Uh-oh. Somebody has a baby. You've got to buy diapers. Uh-oh. And babies poop a lot. Uh-oh. Somebody gets transferred to another city. Spouse can't find a job in that new city. Uh-oh. Mama has a baby. She thinks, I want to stay home with my sweet baby. Uh-oh. We're operating off two incomes. How are we going to do it if she stays home? There's a medical emergency. All these medical bills start coming in. Uh-oh. How are we going to make those new payments? You become a Christian. You think and reading your Bible, I want to give 10% to my church of my income to help the poor and to reach the lost. Uh-oh. In order to do what God wants me to do, which I probably should have done first, now wh what if I can't make my payments? What happens, and some of you could preach this sermon better than me, what happens when you can't make your payments? A number of things can happen. Number one, Operation Repo can show up at your front door. You ever seen that TV show? These big buff dudes with pepper spray, okay? They come to your house, say, I'm taking your car. People fight with them. They cuss at them. It doesn't matter. They're big. They will beat you up, okay? And then they tow your car off because it ain't your car. And I love how people on the show are like, you can't take my car. If you have car payments, just stop making them for a while and you'll find out whose car it really is, okay? It won't be yours anymore. <laughs> it doesn't belong to you. A lender could foreclose on your house. In time, they give you a notice. you got to move out. If you don't, you can get evicted, and they can move all of your stuff into your front lawn. You don't think this happens? Down the street from me, a couple weeks ago, heading to work. Everything looks good. Heading home, my neighbor, all his stuff was in his front yard. It wasn't a yard sale. He got evicted. I don't know if it's because he was a renting or 
foreclosure and then got evicted. I don't know. His stuff got moved out into his front lawn. I've seen it twice in the last year. Collections calls. What do they say? We're going to ruin your credit if you don't make those payments. I can't. I can't. It doesn't matter. You make them, we'll ruin your credit. Somebody sues you. They win. They get a judgment against you. Now your wages get garnished. Now it comes out of your paycheck before you get paid. These are just things, some of the things that can happen. What do you think these things do to a marriage? What can they do to an otherwise good marriage? Wreck it. Add all kinds of unnecessary stress to it. And then the blame game starts. Husband says to the wife, well, if you had to put all those clothes on our credit card, we'd be just fine racking up all that debt. your fault. Wife says to husband, if you had about that stupid $500 a month truck, souped up truck, looks real cool now, doesn't it, honey? I mean, if we had bought that, we'd be just fine. Fight, fight, blame game. Have you ever considered that maybe the reason your marriage is a wreck or was a wreck, or is falling apart. Maybe one of the reasons might be that you're deep in debt and you're not working hard to get out. That maybe if you got out of debt, your story would be like theirs, and you might say, it saved my marriage. And they don't mean getting out of debt saved it or that Dave saved it. Following God's principles saved their marriage. They were listening to Solomon, and it saved their marriage. It could happen to you. What do you have to lose? Like Ashley said, go big or go home. As pastors, we know, takeaway number one, debt can wreck marriages. Some of you have talked to us about it, wrecking yours. The reason we're doing this series, the reason we're going to say some things that might be controversial is because we don't want debt to wreck your marriage. We see it wreck many. Number one cause of divorce is money problems. We just don't want to see it hurt you and your family. Takeaway number one. John, would you help me with the others? All right, takeaway number two. You ready? You're gonna like this one. If you owe money on your car, you probably need to sell it. Somebody going and say, what? I, I got out in the cold to go to get me some church this morning, not to sell my car. Remember, we're trying to help you get out of debt and get free in this series. And if you owe money on your car and you're in debt, you probably need to sell it. You, you heard what Chad and Ashley said, that two cars, $60,000, typical, probably like a lot of us, $700 billion of outstanding car loans in the United States, $700 billion. And do you know who makes a whole lot of money on those car loans? Drive down the street, it's the people with the big buildings. It's people lending that money. And, and the reason they're able to make that money is because we say, I want that car, and I want it now. I, I don't want to drive the car I can afford, but I would rather go into debt, pay someone lots of interest, because I want that car, that car. Heard Chad and Ashley talking. Man, it was tough, wasn't it? It was tough to sell that Mustang, that Acadia, but you know what? They survived. Did you hear it? And actually, their marriage thrived when they drove older cars. Hear that? Because they had $60,000 less debt. Borrowing money for a car seems normal in our culture, but it's never a good idea. What you got to remember is normal is broke in our culture. Chris said a minute ago, it's never a good idea to borrow money for anything. And we're talking about personal, consumer kind of debt here. But it's really not a good idea to borrow money for a car. And let me tell you just practically why it's really not a good idea to borrow money for a car. Because a car is something that depreciates in value. In other words, it goes down in value over time, right? And, and it's never a good idea to borrow money for something that goes down in value. Let me tell you how quickly a car goes down in value. Talking about a new car here. Check this out. If you buy a new car, the average car loses 
20% of its value, you're number one. Not only that, average car loses 11% of its value when you drive it off the lot. So here's an example. Let's say you buy a new car, 30 grand. You're proud, it's shiny, looking good. The second the front wheels of that car hit the street in front of the dealer's lot, that car is now worth $26,700. Congratulations, just appreciated $3,300 in four seconds. One year later, it's worth $24,000. And then five years later, it's depreciated about 65% of the car. It's worth about $11,000. And this is how people end up what's called upside down on their car. In other words, you owe this much, okay? The car's only worth this much. You owe more than the car's worth. So even if you want to sell it, you have to then add some money, find some other cash to pay off the loan. Heard Chad and Ashley talking about that. Well, let me tell you good news. Here's good news. You can buy a car without a loan. Do you know that? You can buy a car without borrowing money. I've done it, done it many times. It's actually a very smart thing to do. But here, here's what you've got to decide, okay? Before that happens, you have to decide, you know what? It's more important for me, for our family, to be financially free than it is to drive a car that I can't afford. Now, I'm, I'm not against new cars. You know, if you are meeting your monthly expenses, and if you've paid off all your debt, and if you're saving for the things you need to be, college, retirement, and you still have excess money in the bank to go down and buy a car for cash, then go buy one. Buy two. Buy me one while you're buying those cars. But it's just, it's not ever a smart thing to borrow money for a car. So here's how I would encourage you. Again, if you want to get out of debt, here's how I would encourage you. If, if you have a car loan that's not within six months of being paid off, okay, I would sell that car. I would take that money after you pay off the loan, whatever other cash you have. I would take that cash, maybe you have some other cash, pay cash for a car. And then if you have other debt, that payment that you were making every month, that three, four, five hundred dollars, take it and start paying down that other debt as fast as you can, fast as you can. If you don't have any other debt, th then you can take those dollars that you were paying that three, four, five hundred, pay yourself, put it in a savings account every month, pay yourself the interest, and then before you know it, you'll have enough to pay cash for a new car. Yeah. It's just never smart to borrow money for cars. Okay, takeaway number three. Takeaway number three, you probably need plastic surgery. I ain't talking about Michael Jackson plastic surgery. I ain't talking about Dolly Parton plastic surgery, okay? I'm talking about the kind of plastic surgery that's a first step in getting out of debt. If you did the math with Chad and Ashley, you figured out they had $50,000 of credit card debt. $50,000. Again, that's, that's not unusual. There's about $880 billion, billion of revolving credit card debt in our country every month. $880 billion. I mean, it's so easy, right? I mean, how many of those offers do you get in the mail every single week? Offer after offer. Let, let me just try to clear up a few things because there's some, I think, lies about credit cards. One of the lies is this. People say, well, you know, I, you got to have a credit card because I buy stuff online, Amazon.com, you know, or, or sometimes I, I go out of town, I rent a car. You got to have a credit card to do that stuff, right? No. No. You can do all of that with a debit card. Debit card draws straight from your bank account. You don't need a credit card. Here's something else I hear. Well, you know, I need to get a credit card, people tell me, because I, I gotta start working on my credit. I need better credit. You, you ever hear the, uh, they got the commercials all the time about your FICO score? 
Got to get your score up. Well, let me tell you something. If you quit borrowing money, it doesn't matter what your FICO score is, okay? Matter of fact, Dave Ramsey calls your FICO score your I love debt score. However high your score is, how much you love debt. And to a large degree, that's true. You, you don't need a FICO score. And then a, a third lie, I'll pay off my credit card every single month. I'll do it. Now, some of you do that. That's great. But get this, 100 million Americans don't do it every month. 100 million. And you know what? If you start paying uh, interest and finance charges on your credit card, it will jack you up in a hurry, in a real hurry. Let me give you some examples, uh, like a student loan. Student loan, you pay 5 to 7 8% interest usually on average. Car loan, some of you guys know you'll pay 4 to 12% interest, something around that. Credit card, you know what you'll pay? 12%. 24%, 36%, saw one the other day, 79.9%, no lie. So just a quick example, say you got $5,000 of revolving credit card debt every month you don't pay, could easily add interest and finance charges, 150 bucks a month. And then you know what happens next month? They're gonna charge you interest on that $150 as well. Let me tell you a truth about credit cards. A truth, a sad truth, but 63% of the people who file bankruptcy in the United States, 63% say their main financial issue was credit cards. 63%. And let me tell you one other truth. Um, study after study has shown that when you use plastic instead of cash, guess what? You spend more money. You spend more money. I mean, it's easy, isn't it? I mean, that take your credit card and it just slides right across that magnetic reader. That doesn't hurt at all, does it? It doesn't hurt. Stick it back in your wallet. Feel good. You separate yourself from your cash. Matter of fact, there was a study, a big study at McDonald's done. People who use plastic instead of cash spent 47% more. 47%. When we do Financial Peace University, when we have that class, matter of fact, we've got a FPU class coming up here soon. You had some cards in your chair with all that information. Man, I encourage you to check that out. Man, I, I would encourage everybody to go through FPU. Um, so I hope a lot of you will sign up. But when we do FPU, we have one night um, towards the beginning of the class that we have what we call financial baptisms financial bad and what happens is people come up the aisle they bring their credit cards they cut them up and they put them in a jar and we call it financial baptism because people are coming up and committing themselves and saying you know I hate debt and what they're saying essentially is this this credit card it's a visual physical symbol of my financial irresponsibility. And I'm gonna do plastic surgery on that thing because I am tired of being, I'm going public, no more debt. And it's awesome. People stream up the aisles, people clapping and cheering, going crazy because they understand the power of being free, being free financially. So. Here's my challenge to you today concerning your credit cards. You ready? Want to get out of debt, have credit cards, I'd encourage you, take that credit card, cut it up. Cut them up. Then don't charge another cent. Credit cards. Start paying those credit cards off as fast as you can. And then as soon as you have it paid off, close that account. Be done with it. Instead of having the temptation of credit card, start using debit card. Start using cash. Because here's the truth. If you don't have the money for something, that means you can't afford it. That means you don't need it. Now, I get this, this, is, this is radical stuff. This is, some of you can go home and say, man, that dude talking about money today at Eli, that dude was smoking crack. 
because he was crazy. And I, I get that. I get that. But if you're going to follow God with your money instead of following debt, it takes being radical. It takes not being ordinary because ordinary is broke. And we don't want to be ordinary. We don't want you to be ordinary. Dave Ramsey, he says, you know, you can wander into debt, but you can't wander out. You got to run. And I just want to encourage you today. I want to encourage you, if you're in debt, get on your running shoes and start running out of debt. Would you guys help me thank John? Isn't that good? You're like, I think it's good, but I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do about that. Okay, I get it. I get it. I was reading his notes that he shared with me about what he was going to say this weekend, and he talked about the financial baptism they do. And I said, John, 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 what if at all of our services, we do a spontaneous financial baptism? Some of y'all are like, what if we don't? I mean, so this would be, <laughs> what if we give people the opportunity this weekend to do what they do at FPU and to go public and say, no more debt? John, why don't we do it for the sake of their marriage? for the sake of their children, for the sake of their future, for the sake of living according to God's principles. Why don't we do it? So we decided to do it, and it's gonna be exciting, only if you respond, okay? But it's gonna be exciting, okay? And so we have at all of our campuses uh, jars and scissors here at the front. After I pray in a second, we're gonna invite you, this is something you feel God leading you to do, to come down here and do plastic surgery. Now. If you're married, talk to your spouse first. Don't grab the cards and be like, peace. I mean, and go cut them up. <laughs> this is a joint decision, okay? So you can come up here and you can just go public. Spontaneous financial baptism. God, I'm just wanting the world to know and you to know no more debt. For the sake of my marriage and my family, no more debt. It'd be powerful. Why don't you respond today? Before I pray, though, one more thing. <laughs> You know, if you want to get out of debt financially, it's going to take some time. That's okay. I wish I could pray for you and we walk out of here and we're all out of debt. That'd be fantastic. You would be like, I'll pay you money. Okay, no, we can't do that. It's going to take time. But I'll tell you something that isn't going to have to take you a lot of time. You can become spiritually debt-free in a moment today, right now. Did you know that you owe God a debt? You were supposed to be perfectly obedient to God. How'd you do? For me, I've fallen far short of that. I'm not perfect, not even close. So that means we've got to make a payment. The Bible says for all of eternity, and it'll never be paid off. And we'll spend eternity separated from God in a place the Bible calls hell, where we're punished for our sins. But did you know that this is the reason Jesus came? He was perfectly obedient for you that it might be credited to your account. He died on a cross to make your payment once and for all and rose from the dead to declare you debt free. If you'll commit your life to Jesus, you can be spiritually debt free walking out of your campus today. Greatest news in all of history, no more payment for your sin. You're made right with God, not because of what you've done, but because Jesus came, you trusted in him, and he declares you debt free. It's amazing. It's by committing your life to Christ, turning from your sin, it's called repentance, turning to Jesus and saying, Jesus, make me debt free. I owe a debt I can't pay. You came to pay it, Jesus. Make me debt free. And he will. He will. And then he can help you get out of your financial debt as well. He's helped my wife and I. He can help you too. Let me pray. And then I hope many of you come to the front and we get to do some plastic surgery today. Let me pray. God, thank you so much for the wisdom from Solomon that if we're in debt, we should be getting out of debt quickly. And God, a lot of people would have to admit their credit cards are a symbol of their financial slavery and irresponsibility, and they need to get rid of them. They're abusing them. They're carrying over their balances. It's just, it's not working. 
God, I pray that you give many people the boldness and courage today to talk to their spouse and then to come forward and say, I'm cutting up this. I'm going public my, for, my fam, for the sake of my family and my marriage. No more debt for us. No more debt. And we're going to symbolize that today by cutting up these cards and saying we're paying these things off and we're not going to touch them again. That's not easy, God. A lot of us look to our credit cards for security, but we shouldn't. God gives us security. God provides for us. We shouldn't be looking to debt to do what only God can ultimately do. God, do something awesome now. And if somebody hasn't, that's here today hasn't met Jesus, been declared spiritually debt-free, that's the most important thing that can happen today. I pray for them. They'd be debt-free today spiritually because they commit their life to follow Jesus. God, give people boldness and courage right now to respond. It's going to be awesome. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for checking out one of our messages today. For more information about our church or to watch other messages, you can go to our website at experiencelifenow.com. Let us know if we can serve you in any way, and we hope to see you real soon.